good day students today we shall look into interference of light by division of amplitude now this is mainly seen in thin films and here are a few examples of interference by di division of amplitude by thin films on the top right we can see the spread of an oil slick or oil uh, is spread upon the road surface and while spreading it spreads into a very thin film and this causes such a pattern to be seen so when sunlight falls upon this thin film we can see colors from it on the top right we can see a shell okay so again here inside the shell there is a thin layer uh, and this acts as a thin film and this thin film when viewed in sunlight can be seen as a colored film on the bottom left we have a soap bubble okay so we may have all played with soap bubbles and when we see the soap bubble in light sunlight we can see different colors on it and on the bottom right we see a sediment deposition on a rock surface okay so this deposition uh, is on the range of microns 10 raised to minus 6 and hence it acts as a thin film and thus when viewed in sunlight it shows colors okay so first of all what is a thin film it can be any film any film transparent to light okay that has a thickness of 0.5 to 10 microns microns is in meters 10 raised to minus 6 meters okay so examples of thin films are a thin sheet of transparent material like glass or mica air film enclosed between two transparent plates so if we sandwich two uh, glass plates together a thin air film will be uh, with uh, inside it and that can act as a thin film a soap bubble is a thin film. The oil spread on any surface is a thin film. Okay. So a thin film, when defined, it should have two parameters. Its thickness should be defined and its refractive index mu should be defined. Okay. So if a thin film of thickness small t and refractive index of mu is given, when sunlight falls upon it, on the upper surface what happens a part will get reflected and another part will transmit into the other medium okay okay so a part is reflected and another part is refracted into the second medium okay now the light ray that is refracted into the second medium will again undergo such a division it will again reflect upon the bottom boundary and again refract upon the bottom boundary okay now here again we can see reflection taking place on the top surface and refraction taking place upon that boundary and these two rays shown in red color they happen to interfere to produce an interference pattern okay now we can have another case see from the uh, refracted ray we can have uh, another ray refracting into the outer medium and these two green rays can also happen to interfere and produce an interference pattern okay so the red rays they show an interference pattern by reflection okay and the green rays show an interference pattern by yes refraction in this chapter we will mainly deal with interference by division of amplitude due to reflection now when a plane wave is incident on a thin film the waves reflected from the upper surface they interfere with the waves reflected from the lower surface. Okay, that is shown in this figure. So 
when the black ray is incident upon the thin film shown in green color it will reflect and get refracted okay so the red ray designated as one is the reflected ray and the yellow ray within the oil film of thickness small d is the refracted ray now that yellow ray will again divide into two components when it falls on the lower surface of the thin film okay so again and the on the lower surface we can see the red reflected ray and the yellow refracted ray now this red reflected ray will fall upon the upper surface to again get reflected and refracted now the refracted ray is shown in the yellow color and designated as 2 okay so overall if we view the thin film if incident light is falling upon it we can get two or more beams to emerge from it okay so here we are just considering two beams and these two beams they happen to interfere and produce an interference pattern now here there is an important thing that we have to take into consideration read through it reflected waves undergo phase change but refracted waves do not undergo phase change for a perfect example if you hold a rope that is uh, fixed at a point and the at the other end you are holding it in your hand if you vibrate that rope we can see that the wave that is propagating to the uh, fixed position it will emerge from the wave in the opposite direction okay now when light reflects from a boundary there happens a phase change and this has to be taken into consideration so if we have two uh, medias of index uh, one is having a higher index of refraction let the dark blue be the medium higher index of refraction and the light blue represent the medium having lower index of refraction lower refractive index okay so uh, on the left side of this figure we can see that light is incident from a denser medium to a rarer medium okay so when light is incident from a denser medium to a rarer medium the boundary of the denser to rarer medium the reflected wave does not have any phase change okay but let us see the uh, medium on the right side here when light is incident from a rarer medium upon a denser medium okay the reflected wave will have a phase change of half wavelength okay so when light is incident from a rarer medium to a denser medium on the boundary of of the surface the reflected wave will have a phase change of half wavelength okay now keep this in mind now let us see what happens when light is incident normally on a plane parallel thin film so light falls exactly perpendicular to a film and this film has some particularities we are taking this into consideration for easy uh, discussion okay for the ease in the discussion now we have taken a plane parallel thin film a plane mean plane film means its surface is plane its surface is parallel okay so the plane is parallel here the film should be thin that is it should be in the range of micrometers so when light falls perpendicularly on a plane parallel thin film okay so for that let us consider a surface um and the surrounding medium is air we are placing a thin film on that surface okay and its thickness is t and refractive index is mu light happens to fall perpendicularly upon it now if we place a thin film on a table how can we shine light upon it perpendicularly 
we may have to hold the light source just on top of it, right? But while doing experiments, we never do such a thing. What we do is, we place the light source in front of this thin film uh, on the table. Okay, so we have rays emerging from the source light. You can, you have, you might have seen this in our lab while do, doing the uh, experiments in the spectrometer room. Okay, so we have the source in front of us. So rays are for, coming from it, and the rays from that are made to fall on a mirror or glass plate placed at 45 degrees. Now, what does a glass plate do? It bends or reflects the light rays to 90 degrees and makes the light rays to fall upon this thin film. Okay, so we have light rays falling upon this thin film. Now, what happens is when light falls on the surface of this thin film, okay, a part of it gets refracted into the medium and that refracted ray will again get reflected from the bottom surface. It will get reflected again towards the upper surface. Okay. So this blue colored rays are seeing the incoming red color rays. Okay. Since the two, these two rays are derived from the same source, they are coherent beams. And when these two sets of coherent beams meet each other, they superimpose upon each other, they interfere with each other, they will produce an interference pattern. Okay. Now, this pattern can be viewed by placing uh, an eyepiece on top of it. Okay, so if we just look over that thin film, and glass plate we can see it with our uh, we won't be able to see it with our eyes because the uh, fringes will be very uh, close to each other okay they will be at distances of millimeters so if we use a uh, eyepiece microscope we can view the fringes now this is an interference pattern due to reflection and what is the optical path difference between these two interfering waves? So what is it? Now we just need to calculate what is the difference between the path travel between the red ray and that blue ray. Now additional path traveled is the distance traveled by the blue ray. Okay, naturally the distance traveled by the blue ray is the path difference. Now what is the distance traveled by the blue ray? The geometrical distance is t downwards and t upwards. So, 2t. Okay. Now, here, since it is traveling through a medium of refractive index, mu, we have to take into consideration the optical path difference. So, optical path difference will be refractive index into distance traveled. That is 2 mu t. Let us try to derive the conditions for constructive interference and destructive interference when light falls normally on a plane parallel thin film. So for the condition for bright fringes that is constructive interference is given by the true path difference should be an integral multiple of wavelength. We have seen that earlier, right? Now I, ha I have used the term true path difference. Okay. So the path difference, the optical path difference is not enough we need to calculate the actual path difference or the true path difference. And that is given as the optical path difference plus the path difference due to phase change. So here on the top surface of the thin film, light is falling from a rarer medium to a denser medium. Okay. So the light reflected from the top surface will undergo a phase change of pi and that is a path difference of lambda by 2. Okay. It is a path difference of half wavelength. So that is to be taken into consideration here. So the optical path difference and the path difference due to phase change is taken together as the actual path difference or the true path difference that is given as 2 mu t minus lambda by 2. See naturally 
2 mu t will be greater. So that's why we have 2 mu t minus lambda by 2. Okay. Now this path difference should be an integral multiple of wavelength n lambda. Now if we take all the lambda terms together to one side we get 2 mu t is equal to n plus 1 by 2 into lambda where n can have any integer values 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. Okay, this is the condition of bright fringes in a plane parallel thin film. Now likewise the condition for dark fringes that is the condition for destructive interference can be obtained as the true path difference to be an odd integral multiple of wavelength. That is 2 mu t minus lambda by 2 will be 2n plus 1 odd integral multiple of lambda by 2. Taking the lambda terms together on the right side we get 2 mu t is equal to n plus 1 lambda where n can have value 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. Okay. So here this n plus 1 is again in another integer right. Hmm? And here in a thin film, we cannot, uh, we don't distinguish the zeroth order fringe or the first order, second order. We just see a series of fringes. So there is no relevance for the central or the zeroth order or first order, second order, third order. We just see a series of lines. Okay. So we can rewrite this as 2 mu t is equal to n lambda where n is having values 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. Okay. So n plus 1 can be substituted as n. There is no harm in it. There is no physical significance in it. That's why we are uh, substituting it in this manner since there is no physical significance in it. That's all for today. Thank you.